It's late August and it's time for another gardening update. Let's get out there and see what's going on. Even though I've topped it and pruned it, the Sun Gold is still producing plenty of tomatoes for us. I also did four grafts on this plant and those are starting to set tomatoes too. It's been a very good tomato year here and along with the Sun Gold tomatoes we grew eight different dwarf type tomatoes. If you want to see taste test videos of our tomatoes this year I'll put links to those down below. Along with harvesting plenty of tomatoes we're also harvesting our melons now. I did a taste test video on this one recently and I hope to have that one up soon. Here's a look at a couple of blot peppers on the left and ruia peppers on the right. I also did a taste test video on these and that'll be coming up soon also. Here's a look at the only pole beans we have left. The rattlesnake beans got tall enough and heavy enough that they collapsed the bamboo stakes that I had at the top of these cages. As you can see they're still producing some beans and they have also a lot of blooms on them. But at this time in the summer the beans and some of the other plants are starting to look just a little bit old and tired. And to tell you the truth this is about the time of year when I start feeling a little old and tired too. Along with harvesting things, this is when we start pulling out a few plants. I've pulled out a few tomatoes and some of these beans will go soon. The variegated sugar tip Rose of Sharon is looking pretty good right now and it even has more flowers than when I took this clip. Those double pink flowers are real eye catchers. Not too far from the sugar tip rows of Sharon are the tomatoes that I have planted around our storm shelter. And as you can see, some of them still have quite a few tomatoes on them, especially up at the top. We have lots of sunflowers blooming right now, and this is one of my favorites from this year. This one grew from some of our own seeds, so I'll be saving seeds from it. That's the neat thing about saving your own seeds. Sometimes you end up with lots of interesting variations, like this one and this one. We have all of our corn harvested now, and overall I'm very happy with the way they turned out. Shucking this corn was like unwrapping Christmas presents. I wasn't sure what was going to be inside. This is hybrid corn that I produced by crossing japonica corn with some ornamental popcorn I've been working with. Because I am growing it as a popcorn, I'll be letting this dry out. Then later on I'll do some test popping by popping some kernels from each ear. After that I'll select seeds from the ears that look the best, pop the best, and taste the best. Let me know if you like the color of the ones that have a lot of red in them or the ones that have a lot of yellow in them. I'm just curious to know what other people think. Here's a little closer look at some of the ears. The two dark ears at the bottom were harvested from the japonica corn and it was crossed with this hybrid corn. I'll be interested to see if we get any variegated leaves next year. Little breeding projects like this helps keep the fun in gardening for me. When the sunflower seeds start to mature, the goldfinches just seem to know and start showing up. I plant some of our sunflowers, but the birds plant the rest. Migrating hummingbirds are starting to visit our feeders and we really enjoy watching them quite a bit. Even though they do go to our feeders, it seems like they enjoy the Mexican sunflowers and the Rose of Sharon just as much as they do the feeders, or maybe more. We're also starting to see some monarchs on the Mexican sunflowers, but the peak of the monarch migration usually happens in September around here. 
The Buena Mulata pepper plant has been very productive for us this year. They start out purple, then go through several color changes on their way to red when they're fully ripe. We'll be harvesting some of these and most of the other peppers too. Right next to those were the Oda. Then beyond the Oda is the Ahi Rico. And as you can see, it's still loaded with peppers even though we picked a lot. I did a taste test video on this pepper, so if you want to see that, I'll put a link down below. Even though the albino bullnose pepper is pretty small, as you can see, it produces quite a few peppers. And we've already harvested some off of this plant. The Chinese five color hot peppers add some interesting color to the garden and they look a little bit like old fashioned Christmas lights. Right next to that plant is the Mega Gold and it's finally getting some peppers on it. It did very well for us last year, but not quite as well this year and it looks like I just knocked a pepper off. These peppers get very large and when they're fully ripe they turn yellow. I did quite a few experimental grafts out in the garden this year and one of the ones I did was an Oda grafted onto this Mega Gold plant and it's got a pepper on it. The Heritage Big Jim Chili Pepper took a while to get going but as you can see it's now loaded with peppers. And those get very large and some of them almost get up to a foot long. The Cubanelle pepper has done pretty well this year and it has a few that need to be picked also. And it's also got some up at the top. It looks like we've got a ripe Ruia pepper and it also has quite a few green ones on the plant still. Right next door to it is the blot pepper and there are a few of those that are ready to pick. I'm liking the blot pepper quite a bit this year. I think I might grow that one again. Even though a couple of branches broke off the Lesia pepper plant, we still have quite a few peppers on it. And a lot of them are up near the top, as you can see. Even though we picked quite a few Jimmy Nardellos, there are still some left on the plant. This is one day's harvest off of the plants that we have out in the main garden and out there we only have one of each type of plant. Most of these I'm liking pretty well this year and most of them are worth growing again. Of course every year I have a hard time trying to decide which ones make it and which ones don't so we'll see next spring. I would say that most of these peppers are worth trying if you've never tried them before. Even though I haven't talked about them much, the banana plants are doing pretty well. The dwarf Orinoco hasn't grown much, but I mainly want to get it to survive the winter. Right above it are the Musa Velutina and they're flowering and starting to form bananas. Those tiny little Bananas at the bottom are hard to see, but they're there. I'm thinking about cutting a couple of those larger Musa Bass Jew plants down just to give the other bananas some sunshine. As you can see, the sweet potato vines are trying to swallow up the grow bags with the peppers in them. I'll harvest the sweet potatoes sometime next month. These are some F3 black pearl hybrids that I planted very late. And right on the stem of one of them is a black swallowtail caterpillar getting ready to turn into a chrysalis. One of my favorite black pearl hybrids is starting to get some color on the peppers now. I'll be saving seeds from that and I might grow some during the winter. If I find some extra time I might do a taste test on these soon. I pulled out a couple of tomatoes that we had in the grow bags and planted some lettuce in their place. Since it's my goal to stabilize some of my hybrid pepper projects, I'm growing some during the winter this year and here's a look at some of the seedlings that I already have started. Some of them are pretty interesting to me. I'm not sure how many I'll carry forward, but I'll be giving updates on these in coming months. Please like and share this video and if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. We'll see you next time.